Today we travel to a desert planet in a galaxy far, far away to explain the basics of Aperture. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning fun. So to start off, what is Aperture? Well, it's one of the three fundamental components that controls the amount of light that comes into your camera. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So inside your lens, there's a mechanism known as an iris, which controls the opening of the lens that will let light into the camera. A larger opening will allow more light, and a smaller opening lets less light through. Now, if you're just getting started, this can be a little bit confusing because smaller numbers equal more light. But the reason is this is actually shorthand for a fraction. So if you see F 2.0, that's actually one over 2.0, which equals 0.5. If you see f4.0, that's actually 1 over 4.0, which equals 0.25. So the larger your aperture number, the less light will be coming through the opening in your lens. You may have heard of a stop or an f-stop. This simply refers to double the amount of light or half the amount of light coming into your camera. For instance, going from f4.0 down to f2.8 is doubling the amount of light that's coming into your camera through your aperture. So how does aperture actually affect your photo? Well, using a large aperture like f1.4 results in a shallow depth of field, meaning less is going to be in focus in your image. Photographing the same environment at different apertures will result in more or less being in focus. So if you find you need more in focus, simply shoot at a smaller aperture. If you want to create an image where the background is out of focus and your subject is in focus, then you should use a large aperture like f1.4. Hmm, wide open you must shoot. Shallow depth of field you will receive. Now all lenses have what's known as a maximum aperture, and this refers to the most amount of light that it can possibly let into your camera. If you allow more light into your camera with your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO don't have to work as hard to create that proper exposure, meaning you can use a lower ISO and a faster shutter speed. Now, shutter speed controls motion blur in a photograph. For instance, if you're in a dark environment, you can shoot with a large maximum aperture like f1.4 and your subjects are not going to be blurry. Now, on most cameras, you'll be able to shoot in aperture priority mode, which allows you to choose your aperture and your shutter speed will automatically be calculated by your camera. Aperture will also affect sharpness of a lens. Most lenses tend to be their most sharp at f11. So remember, shooting with an aperture of 1.4 or 2.0 will let more light into your camera, which will allow you to do things like shoot with a faster shutter speed to capture motion. It will also create a shallow depth of field, keeping your subject in focus and making anything in the background blurry and out of focus. Shooting at an aperture of f11 will reduce the amount of light coming into your camera, but your images are going to be sharper and have a much wider depth of field. This is ideal when you want more of your scene to be in focus. Mm. Thanks so much for watching this video on Aperture. If you like this video, hit that big thumbs up right down below and click on that subscribe button. Now, if you want to learn even more about the basics of photography, check out our tutorial Photography 101, where we go in depth and explain everything you'd ever need to know about photography. And as always, I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. I'm so confused. <sighs> I'll save you. Oh look, it's old Ben Kenobi. I'm I'm actually called old Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, but okay, whatever you say. Oh look, I'm Archie. I'm the cutest droid there is. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Let me get on my speeder. Gee.
Bye, everyone.